everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to do something a little bit different. I am going to try to make a dying mistake on purpose, so that way we can try to correct it. Now, I don't 100% know that this is going to go the way that I think, but I'm going to give it a shot, and we will see what happens. So before we get started, make sure you're subscribed and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. What happens when you have an unintentional white spot left on your yarn? How can you fix it? And we are going to go through that today. I'm going to dye some yarn, intentionally leaving some undyed portions behind, and then we're going to go try correcting it with some spot treatment on the remaining white patch, which may or may not work perfectly, but uh, even if you have some more tonal changes in that in the fixed spot, I think it'll be less obvious than say a bright white patch. And so how are we gonna get that white patch? We are gonna use a resist technique and dye the yarn a semi-solid color and then come back in and correct it. Today we have 200 grams of yarn in Knit Picks Stroll fingering weight yarn and Knit Picks Hawthorne fingering weight yarn. And Hawthorne is now available also in Sport, I believe, as is, well, Stroll has been available in Sport weight for a while. Uh, Stroll is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and Hawthorne is 80% fine superwash highland wool, 20% uh, polyamid. And I'm taking one of my favorite reusable nylon zip ties and pulling it really tight across both skeins. So not only is this an additional tie, but the fact that it is so tight on the yarn will give us a resist and should leave some white or at least a very noticeable pale patch behind when we dye the yarn. I am dyeing two skeins today, so that way I have two chances to correct the quote mistake. If you'd like to learn more about the yarn or any of the other materials that I'm using today, I have affiliate links for all of them in the video description. Since I want the white to be an intentional white spot left behind versus an unintentional one today, um, I am pre-soaking the yarn in plain tap water for 30 minutes so we can get a more even application of the dye throughout the rest of the skeins. For our dye today, we are gonna use a 1% stock solution of Dharma Electric Violet, and I am going to mix it up well before adding it to the pot. In this pot, I have 16 cups of water and no acid yet. Um, and I'm gonna add one full cup of this 1% stock solution which should be about 240 milliliters of dye, or about 2.4 grams of the dye powder. I'm now gonna take our pre-soaked yarn and slowly and carefully add it in to our dye bath, like so. And with a dedicated dye tool, I am just going to move it gently um, so the color can access most of that yarn. Now let's add some acid. I'm going to add four tablespoons of white vinegar and move things around and also start heating. You could leave your yarn in the cool dye bath for a while if you wish. Um, that is totally a preference and that depends on the kind of color that you want to create. We're still going to get a kettle dyed effect here um, with some different tones, but it'll be a bit more even than if I had put the yarn into a hot dye bath. Then we would have gotten a lot more variation. But I want the most variation to be at our pale spot at the resist point. Um, so now I'm going to heat it up and I guess heat the yarn until the dye has exhausted which I expect, since we're starting from cold, maybe we'll take around 30 minutes or so. 30 minutes later, and at one point the pot got to quite a nice boil. I just turned off the heat, and let's check. There's a little color left in there, some pink. Um, I'm gonna go ahead then and leave this yarn in the pot to cool for a while because this is what I would do under a normal circumstance. Um, now, I know I'm gonna end up painting over our resist point um, later, 
and then steam setting. So if I was doing this kind of resist thing intentionally, I might remove it so it could cool. But I've got time, so we're just gonna let things cool off in the dye pot. And I suppose for good measure, one, two, three more tablespoons of white vinegar. After cooling down for a while, um, the water has mostly cleared. I'll show you that closer in a second. I'm draining out a lot of the water and setting the yarn aside to cool. And that dye bath is almost completely clear. La 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 la, we had a great day of dyeing. Let's check out our finished dyed yarn. <gasps> Oh no! There's a massive white spot! Whatever should we do? Okay, sorry, I, I, I couldn't really help myself but go a little dramatic. But yes, we created a very, very stark white spot intentionally. But this is something that could happen unintentionally. Uh, if you had a tie too tight on there um, and you weren't intentionally doing resist, you could get a resist mark. So let's go ahead and try to fix this. Now it just so happens that we were using this electric violet stock solution today and I have some of this color left over. But it's possible that you wouldn't have that color left over. And so you might need to go and try to mix something up or mix some fresh. But uh, we are going to do our best to try to cover up these white patches. I have a little bit of water in a cup and it's not measured intentionally because we're going to be painting some colors onto here. I'm going to add some vinegar because, well, today with the resist there might not be vinegar in there. But maybe you notice this after the yarn is dry. There are many ways that you could go about this. And I'm going to spray some of the color into this water. And now we're going to paint it on and then steam set it. So it's possible that this is going to be way too pastel. Yes. So with that first sort of dip, you look and think, oh goodness, that's already better than the white, but we need more pigment. Um, it's possible I didn't need to dilute the color at all, but to be honest, it's better to start with too little color and then add more. See, we're getting a little closer. You can always add more, but at some point you can't take the color away. And so even that, you can still see where the resist marks were, but we're getting closer to the color. And gee, I think I'm gonna have a leave no dye behind in my future. And now, see what, what, what we're having happen is we're getting some deeper tones on either side, which you could choose to go and add um, some more color to some other parts of the skein as well. But already uh, these are a lot more hidden than they were, because you can even see like that white right there and just adding this in. And, you know, you might not have needed to add vinegar, but I'm choosing to. And even squeezing that out, you can see that that water is fairly clear, so things are striking pretty quickly with that vinegar. And you know, it might be a little darker than the rest of the yarn, but what we have is now way less noticeable. You can still see it, don't get me wrong, like I still know it's there. Um, and I could have used a finer tuned brush, but um, you could get around this also by, okay, say over here we've got this paler patch. When you're touching up, you don't need to just touch up the one area. For consistency, you can go through 
Aha! And then notice that there is a patch that you missed. You can go through and touch up other areas as well to bring some consistency, but still overall keeping the character of the yarn. Um, and this is something that would work whether you have a tonal like I'm playing with today, or if you had a variegated yarn, you could work on touching up just the one patch of color. And as I move the yarn around and shift it around, you almost, well, you almost can't tell where it was. And so that's good. And I think that someone, if someone were to pick up the skein and knit with it, they wouldn't notice anything off. Whereas, you know, this is a little more obvious. I'm going to place this in the steamer basket to just wait while we go and fix the other skein. As I touch up our Hawthorne yarn here um, to fix this up as well, I do want to remind everyone that I've done something similar in the past. Um, ooh, that one is more obvious. Um, in the past, I had a white spot that happened by mistake. I wasn't entirely sure where it came from or why it was happening the way it was. And in that case, I decided to just cover it up with a different color speckles. But that changed the overall character of the yarn, which maybe isn't what you're necessarily going for. I'm going to sort of squeeze that out. Um, to allow myself to add a little, oh dear, to allow myself to add a little more color. A little more color in here. Because the one thing with adding a little bit at a time, there's a limit to how much water you can really fit in an area. But you can again see there's some pigment in that water that's coming out, but the, the mistake is there, like I can see it. But again, if I'm gonna move around the yarn a lot, I would be hard pressed to say, oh, this is exactly where it came from. And I know I said that I could do a leave no dye behind, but instead, I think I might just soak up the rest of this color because in this yarn because I can <laughs> uh, and again this is a way to just use up that color that I pulled out without changing the character of our yarn I placed all of the yarn in my steamer basket and I am going to steam set it for 30 minutes to make sure that that color is completely set. Once the yarn has cooled off, then we can wash it. It is now time to wash our yarn. I went ahead and added a zip tie back on so that way I won't tangle things up. I am really excited to see if I will be able to find where the corrections are later. Um, because I have no other marking of them, but I would say that this looks great and there is no bleeding. Um, I am going to go ahead and wash with a little bit of dish soap. Um, I'm using cool water, but this adding soap is sometimes a way that you can see bleeding um, and then you can put it further, but it seems like this color is definitely in the yarn. So I'll rinse out the soap, uh, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and then hang it up to dry, and we'll come back and inspect these semi-solid tonals that we fixed. So can you tell where I corrected these skeins? It's really, really hard to tell. I think that on the Hawthorne, we can kind of tell. My guess is that this is where it is because we have what looks like two darker stripes with a paler middle, but those darker stripes look really pronounced. Well, well pronounced. Uh, they sort of stand out a little bit right now, but once this is wound into a cake and you start knitting with it, it's gonna blend in and you're gonna not see, like the difference between that and a darker section on the other side is gonna feel less obvious. As for the stroll, 
maybe right here. That feels a tad bit darker than the rest. The, quote, mistake white spots that we had left behind were much more pronounced than these darker patches. Could I have been even more precise with the correction? No question. I could have used a smaller brush and gone on each strand individually. I could have even added in some gore gum so that way it wouldn't spread. But I think that we have stunning tonal yarns and it doesn't feel like, oh, there's that section that is way too pale by a tie, which honestly can happen to everyone. So, I mean, it's a reminder to make sure your ties are all loose enough so that way the yarn can access all the color, but this is just a way that you can correct something. And this is the first time I've really tried this before. I haven't attempted to do a correction like this myself. I've just thought like this is what I would do in this situation. It is also worth noting that my intentional white spots with the resist were far more stark than a error white spot might be. Uh, so that's something else to keep in mind. Of course, you can add speckles on, you could dip into another color. There's many things you could do if there was a section of the yarn that you weren't happy with. Whether or not you've dried the yarn already or if it's still wet, you can always, always, always over dye. You can't take color away, but you can always add more. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video and this little tip on how you can spot fix your yarn. Let me know in the comments if there are any other dyeing quote mistakes or, you know, happy accidents you would like to, me to try to create on purpose so then we can talk about how to troubleshoot and fix. I don't know if I'd be able to do many happy accidents on purpose because usually they are happy accidents, but if I can also be on the eye out for when a true accident or error happens in my future and then so I can talk about what I might do about that. If you really appreciate this video and the Dye Pot Weekly series and you want to support Chemnitz Tutorials on another level, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can get advance notice of shop restocks, behind the scenes sneak peeks, early access to new content, and more. Uh, you can find links in the video description and iCard. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell icon to make sure your notifications are on. Sometimes we've got impromptu live streams and you really, really don't want to miss them. Uh, and I want to thank all of you for watching. This, this was really, really fun to create and I'm excited to make more mistakes because honestly, sometimes I quote Miss Frizzle and I'm like, get, take chances, get messy, make mistakes. And that really is the best way to learn about yarn dyeing. That's how I'm learning. I go out there and I will just try something. And sometimes the things that happen are stunning. Sometimes they're underwhelming, sometimes they're a mistake, but more often than not, it's something that I want to try to recreate and try to control. And by just going and playing with color, you can learn so much. And if you're just getting started, you do not need to start with full skeins of yarn like I use in my videos. If you go back and look at all the vintage, old <laughs> yarn dyeing videos on my channel, I was dyeing two or three grams at a time. I was trying to make the 100 gram skeins of yarn last and stretch through as many videos as possible because I just did not have the budget to play with you know, dozens and dozens of skeins of bare yarn. So there are plenty of options out there uh, so that way you can play around with many, many techniques without going through a lot of yarn. So that way you can figure out the techniques that you enjoy dyeing the most, but then also the types of hand dyed yarn you enjoy knitting with the most. Thank you so much for watching.